Capturing an array of pre-identified spots for Earth uh, scientific observation is one example of the science that Station Crew does. These uh, crew Earth observations allow the crew to observe and photograph natural and human-made changes on Earth. They provide uh, researchers with key data to better understand the planet on which we live. One of these uh, images taken from the crew, the uh, Okavango Inland Delta, northern Botswana, the great Okavango Delta in the uh, Kalahari Desert is illuminated in the sun's reflection point in this panorama taken from the International Space Station. Using the sun glint technique, astronauts can image fine detail of water bodies. Here, the bright line of the Okavango River shows the annual summer flood advancing from the well-watered Angolan highlands to the delta. Most of the water of this river is uh, used up by the forest or evaporates in the dry air. Part of one of the uh, Space Station solar rays is visible at the image upper right. Many of those images of Earth are uh, gathered as part of an experiment on the station known as Crew Earth Observations, which has been in operations since Expedition 1. Today we're going to uh, learn more about it from uh, Dr. Justin Wilkinson, the principal geoscientist, right? Correct. And from uh, Jacobs Engineering, thank you so much for joining us today. So we can talk about these beautiful photos that we always do and awe about, but there is some real science behind Absolutely. these photographs. Absolutely, Lo lots of science. So let's first talk about why, why is Earth Observation Mission, or what is the Earth Observation Mission for the space station? Well, our little group uh, is there to help astronauts take photographs and then to make them available to uh, two big groups of users. The first group is the 25 15 to 25 million people who use the, the uh, who make hits on our site every month, then also to a b bunch of scientists. We've got scientific connections all over the world. So those two major groups. But then we also help the astronauts take these photographs because it's good for them to take the photographs. We know that there's a psychological benefit to doing that. Yeah, they do seem to enjoy taking those photographs, and we probably just as equally enjoy, you know, looking at them. So can you explain to me why it's important for us to be able to view Earth from the perspective of the space station? Well, the, the very large view that, that all satellites, but especially the space station, are, are giving uh, scientists uh, gives us a sense of the size of some of the natural systems. So we, we understand winds better. We understand uh, ocean dynamics better. We understand even tectonics better by looking at the big view. The, the, the eye is a very small lens, which means you see a huge view when you look out of a window. And it's those perspectives which uh, we are... Uh, changing our knowledge of the Earth with. Yeah, and and I know some of these photos are the, the, what we were talking about, just the changing of the Earth. It's kind of interesting. So are we comparing data that we received back from Expedition 1 to like current data now of the same locations? That may be the biggest single thing that we are doing. So many satellites up there now looking at uh, parts of the Earth, but uh, even within our own database, which is now quite big, about a million images, uh, we have the best time looking at the earlier images and comparing with uh, comparing them with what we see today. We see all kinds of changes. So I know some of these spots are pre-identified by you guys. Can you explain to me what are the factors? What, how do you go about determining which locations on Earth that they're going to be taking for the day? Sure. sure. We have a series of uh, scientific uh, collaborators around the world, and uh, they send in uh, a few sites that they would like to have imaged with the particular cameras that we have. And so that makes the main set of sites that we have in our, in our database that we ask for every day, or some of which we ask for every day, depending on where exactly uh, the spacecraft is and when they're awake and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the uh, other group is uh, personal requests from, from crew members and they usually just send us a big long list of places they want to get. So we put that in our database and we ask for those too, again, depending on weather and when they're awake. Wow. So um, so some of these, these uh, photos that we see, um, we're seeing them on social media and the crew members aboard the space station are, are really, um, really engaging with a lot of folks out there and they seem to be some of the most popular things that we're seeing out there. Um, how do you explain, do you feel that that, how does that benefit the mission of, of the crews sharing these kinds of photos with the public? Well, um, before there was Twitter, we were getting something like uh, 20 million hits a month on our website looking at the photographs, the stills. 
this uh, huge new thing of the social media is only boosting the number of people that see the images and starting to understand the world and see what the world actually looks like instead of from a map, from an actual view, such as the, the views we've got there. That's a, there's a Twitter shot of the, of the Andes Mountains, for example. I mean, that's just exciting. It's why I do what I do. That's very good. It is exciting. I think a lot of people really, really do. Um, somehow we connect with that. It's, it's our world. It's our earth. And you see, you know, how... Um, we have all these boundaries, but yet up th from up there, it just doesn't seem that way. And um, very, very interesting. And some beautiful photos. Some of them are almost very artistic um, looking. But I think that the science part is is really intriguing for a lot of people as well. Um, and so if you have anything else that you want to share about the science of, of studying Earth observations, or maybe even explaining how you got into that. Well, I, maybe the first thing to say is that um, the artistic side is what galvanizes very many of the astronauts, and some particularly good at taking artistic shots. Yeah. Um, uh, in fact, a book recently came out with the most artistic shots that one of the astronauts had taken. Uh, but for me, uh, I'm, I'm a desert geologist, which means that uh, I have the best time of all because there's few clouds over the, over the deserts of the world, so I get to see what I want to see all the time. Sure. And I've been working on that now for about 20 years, right wow. here. Okay, so 20 years, so you've been working on this since the Expedition 1 um, of the photos that uh, were being oh taken yeah. down the Korea Oh, yeah, in fact, well before that. So then you've gone through a lot of photos in your time here with us. So uh, I would like to know what is your favorite crew of the observation and tell me why. Well, that the first picture that you put up there, the Okavango Swamps, that is actually one of my research areas. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's neat about it is it shows that the, the annual flood has come all the way to that bottom line, that sharp bottom line just below the, the middle of the picture. Um, and we find that there's not just one of these big swamps there, but we've got something like 10 of them, most of them not active now, but that was a huge new discovery for us, right next door to that one. Very well. It's beautiful. So that's, that's one of my favorite shots. My other favorite shot has just come up, and uh, this is the River Plate in central Argentina. And just to give you a sense of scale, there in the lower left, you see the city of Buenos Aires, which has got about 13 million people. So it's, it's 60 miles across. It's a huge place. And you can see that the, the, the estuary itself, which is all brown, with, filled with brown sediment water, um, is a very large area. And all of that brown sediment has come down the big river, the Paraná River, the second river of South America. And it's been deposited into the sea, making that huge brown mass. And basically what it is is the Andes Mountains, which are being thrust upwards by tectonic forces, being eroded down. And that's the mud that's come off those from the erosion of those big mountains. That is that Huge is. quantities of sediment coming into the sea. Yeah, that is incredibly fascinating. And actually, that photo is, is, is a piece of art, I would think. I would, I would actually enjoy it. I could see that on a wall somewhere. I think that's it's why I chose it. I was asked for another <laughs> favorite, and that's one of my favorites for the exactly it's that It's a reason. nice photo. I, it would be hard to pick one out of all the, the photos that you've seen come across your desk, but I, I think your, um, your work is very um, important and uh, interesting for us, and, and again, the public enjoys that, and I think the crew, member, crew members aboard Space Station enjoy taking those photos as well. Thanks so much for uh, coming out and talking with us today. You're very welcome. Best of nice, luck to you. Nice to be here. Thanks. Thank you.